I'm Sue. And I'm Julia. Welcome to Sticks and Stones. Welcome to episode four of Sticks and Stones. In today's episode, the DIY project will be learning additional looping techniques so that you can make a bracelet or a necklace. We'll also find out what Julia and I have been up to since our last episode. Come join us! To sticks and stones. Glad you guys could join us again. We're really excited about you being here. And I want to say, start out by saying a huge, 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 huge thank you to all the viewers. We have had more than 200 views in our first three episodes, and we have 33 people on our revelry group that have joined us. So awesome. that's very exciting. Yay, yay! Yay! And I don't know how many other people might not be on Ravelry that are watching through the website, which again, in case you guys have forgotten, is um, sticks and stones podcast dot wordpress dot com so you can get show notes there and you can watch the video right there and you can leave us comments comments are a good thing yes because what are we going to do if people leave us comments well I had a wonderful idea to say thank you to you guys I actually um, tried playing around with some beading this weekend no, and not beading I know <laughs> what your your knitting must have been screaming out. Yesterday I did not knit at all. I know it was funny. My Is that why you had that nervous twitch today? <laughs> That's what my husband said. <laughs> he said, I could see you. You were twitching. <laughs> I was kidding. I, you know, apparently I twitch when I don't get to knit every day. So, But I did some beating and I'll show you a nice close-up of this. But um, I thought that um, we could combine the crafts and we'd make some stitch markers oh, fun. for you guys. So I made a couple here um, just to play around with to see if I could even do it. I know you could do it, but so I think they look great, and and um, two lucky viewers are going to get stitch markers from us. So leave us a comment either on the blog or on the thread that I'll put up on the Revelry group for this mark the stitch markers contest, and um, I don't know, tell us tell us something that we don't know or. Or suggest a project you'd like to see us yeah. do. Yeah, just give us a little note about something. I'll be more specific when I put the thread up so that you know what you're really supposed to do. But we'll do a drawing next time for the stitch markers and send out to somebody special. Yeah, so head on over there and you'll see the deadline and details. Yeah. So thanks again. We really appreciate it. And while I'm thinking about it, we are also now on iTunes. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> um, I just subscribed to myself today. <laughs> So you can, go to, you can go to iTunes now and you can um, subscribe through there or you know watch each episode as you feel. But we would love, love, love to have comments, reviews, whatever you guys might think of us would be wonderful because that, that will that'll change our rating on the iTunes and if you store. St well, if you search for Sticks and Stones and then select Podcasts, we're the first one that comes up. I did see that. And yeah. that's pretty exciting yes, to be, you know, to, to think that we would ever actually be published <laughs> on iTunes is just, I, it blows me away. Every single day, it blows me away. <laughs> so what have you been working on? Well, I finished my Oaklet shawl. Nice. I'll take this off and show you guys the world's easiest stitch marker. Or, uh, <laughs> shawl clip. <laughs> Start again. Yeah. We're all human. So this is the Oaklet shawl made it's out so of pretty. Malabrigo sock weight in the Turner colorway. I remembered this time. It's purples and greens and grays and I love it. It was easy. The um That is really pretty. That's lace. what I'm gonna knit next. I wanna see it. Oh <laughs> she's doing so good. She really is, but the lace is really easy. See? Look how good mine looks next. <laughs> so well oh my gosh so but I like that I'm really pleased with it and I really wanted to do something with color so this is this is exactly what I wanted so I'll, I'll uh, link this up and I'll show you guys the yarn up close and all that good stuff and that is all I did well not all but all that I finished <laughs> it is all I finished so okay how about you uh, I finished this for you which is very simple <laughs> it's a seatbelt cover <laughs> But it's, it's, it's actually very simple. It goes over the seatbelt so that when you're driving, it doesn't uh, rub your neck. Mm -hmm. So and my, my daughter my daughter rubs every day, so this is for her. <laughs> yes. So that's pretty easy, and I might be making a pillow for it for when mm -hmm. you guys travel, right? Yes. Okay. So I worked on that. I also um, made this necklace for my sister-in-law's birthday, which was a few days ago. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, I got this idea from... Um, 
from the Craft Zine website. I get uh, their feeds through Facebook. Mm -hmm. And they had this really neat thing about using fabric to make a pendant. So it wasn't exactly like this one, but I took um, this Alexander so Henry cute. fabric with the owls that she, my sister-in-law loves. Um, she's a fabric maven. And so I took the little owl right here, and I did actually do some embroidery on it. You can't really tell, although I think it brings out the color a little bit yeah. and makes it brighter. And so I did some embroidery, and then I um, ironed it to a piece of um, interfacing so that it wouldn't fray. That looks cool. I, like I think it. she's gonna like it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then cut it out, and and what's great about it is the pendant came from Hobby Lobby, and on the back of the the tag for the pendant was a little um, thing you could cut out that shows you how big that is. Oh, nice. So That's that way you easy. can you know, measure it correctly. Because I made my own first, and then I was like, hey, look at that. Um, I could just use that. So, yeah, so I just turned this piece of fabric into a pendant, and That's it's cool. actually double-sided. There's one owl on one side, and another owl. The other one I cut out on the other side. It off now. <laughs> it's a there magnetic is. clasp. You can wear it. So, um, yeah, so really cool. it gave me all sorts of ideas. I was thinking about some other things I might make with that. And what kind of cord is this? That is just um, a necklace that I bought at Hobby Lobby. It's just a leather necklace, and it has this, um, it's kind of neat. It has a, a magnetic clasp, and then you turn it so that yeah. you can't just pull it off. So that's pretty cool. And so there's resin on top of this, and I use this um, Magic Glow resin by Lisa Pavelka. She's an artist who created this resin, and what's great about it is it cures with UV light. So oh. you put a layer on and you just put it out in the sun for 15 minutes All right. and you can build layers and you can also use this to make um, sort of a rounded look so it's almost like a magnifying glass and it does actually... Oh wow. And that you can really put neat. inclusions in it so you could put a layer in and then you could put glitter in and then put oh, another wow. layer or you this. could put little like uh, rhinestones That's in it or something cool. like that. That's cool. It is really neat and it's great that you can also use a black light mm -hmm. or you know, some other type of UV light, but I mean, on a sunny day. Yeah, that's It's kind great. of funny though, when I started this, when I finally got the concept, it rained for two days. <laughs> so I was like, well, I can't finish it yet because oh. it's raining, but... Um, that's really pretty. I yeah, like you just, lot. you have to cure it outside in the sun. You can't put it in a windowsill. It won't cure. Really? Okay. Because the UV light won't come through enough. Okay. But yeah, so you just put it outside and wow. it's, and you can keep building layers and you can also use this to make like drops. So you could take a piece of metal and you could put drops on it and it'll look like raindrops. Oh, it's, neat. You can do all kinds of really neat stuff with this. Wow, that sounds like so, a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll put up the link so that you can get to her site. But I bought this mm. at Hobby Lobby as well. Okay. And you can buy it through beading catalogs. <sighs> Time to go shopping. So, in addition to that, I was making other kinds of jewelry. I went to Hobby Lobby and like was looking for that. Ended up buying the stuff to make this ring. Okay. And I made this necklace. Actually, you might recognize this from the uh, intro. My new intro. <laughs> yes. We had such fun. So with I made it into something. Neat. And in another addition, I was look at how much I knitted. I like, know. It's almost a scarf, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's <laughs> awesome. I really do. She's worked so hard on this, and I just think it's really, it's really good for a first time. Yeah. Um, my motto is, if it doesn't look right, just keep knitting. <laughs> Every time I try to fix it, it just gets worse. <laughs> so. This is going to be my test subject for next week's uh, troubleshooting episode. <laughs> All right. No, this is, I think it's really good. Yeah. And, so. and you said you're going to try to pearl this week. Yes. This is just yes. garter this stitch. Is, yes, I'm going to pearl this week. Very good. That's my goal. I'm thrilled. All right. So what have you been working on? Well, I had a little case of start I guess this week where, you know, I finished my wedding shawl and then I want to go out and start 18 other projects. So I, I did. I started a couple new things. And this is uh, a Milano cowl uh, made out of some gray Madeleine Tosh, uh, which I chose because I really like the, the variega slight variegations in the yarn. The, the tonal, I think, is really cool. And I'll show you guys a closer up picture as we go. So I, so I started that just a little bit gone for that. Cool. Um, and then I have this little tiny tiny little shawl <laughs> that is a tiny shawl yeah it's a striped one i've been really into stripes lately um so this is kind of fun i like the two colors together and um i don't remember which shawl it is but i can post a link to that one too when i remember right now it's real real straightforward all you're doing is increasing and changing colors so i don't need a pattern <laughs> so i kind of forgot what i was doing but so there's that and i'm using up my stash yarn for all this which is really cool 
So for every one ball that you use up, you get to buy two balls? Yes. Or guess, three? Or that's three. what I got for Mother's Day. Oh, what'd you get? I got a gift certificate to a yarn shop. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go out and buy new yarn. Yeah, no, I got to use so up the old the, stuff if first. If you have a gift certificate, you do not have to use up your stash. That's how gift certificates work. I know, but... <laughs> I know. Because that's like free money. I'm really thinking. I got I to plan. I got to think. I got to choose. So, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be enhancing the stash real soon. Maybe I'll have some fun things to show you guys next time. <laughs> so, one more thing I've been working on is getting ready for a class I'm teaching tomorrow at the Museum of Indian Culture in Allentown. Um, in addition to doing jewelry work, I do porcupine quill work, which okay. is a... Uh, a very old Native art, Native American Indian art, mm -hmm. where you take porcupine quills and you wrap them around things or you flatten them and embroider them onto leather. Okay. And so tomorrow is an immersion day where kids can come and learn about Native culture and they have all these different workshops. For my workshop, we're going to be making a yarn version of the, the quilled medicine wheel. All right. And so I'm going to talk to the kids about what, what a medicine wheel is and how it was used in Native culture. And um, and then we're gonna wrap our own and make them. So that's really neat. So this eventually would go over the whole mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gosh, that's really cool looking. And I always thought that um, porcupine quills were so would be hard to work with because they were round and stiff. But you really well, they are a little bit <laughs> difficult to work with. They're neat looking though. You um, soak them in water and then okay. flatten them. And so they're made of the same thing as your fingernails. Oh wow! So when you make them wet, they're pliable like your fingernails. They almost so. look like paper. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's different. Um, so, um, in June, I'll be at the museum again for Artifest, demonstrating horsehair work and porcupine quill work. Very cool. So let's move on now. Are you ready? Yes. For the DIY. Awesome. Today for our DIY segment, we're going to learn about looping. Last time we did some looping. Um, we did a real basic one. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about it and more about looping around to get add added strength to your bead segments. But first we're going to talk a little bit about gauge. And gauge is a measurement of wire. So I have a bunch of different wires here that are all different gauges and they go from 18 gauge to 28 gauge. The bigger the number, the smaller the wire, which sometimes is hard to remember. So this one is a 28 gauge and it's really thin. This is 24, this is 20, both of these are 20, and this one is 18. <clears throat> uh, when you buy wire, a lot of times it has this little um, piece on it. Make sure that stays on there or you write on the, um, on the spool with a marker what your gauge is because you won't remember. These two are actually the same gauge and to look at them at first I wouldn't think they are. And the subtleties between them, you can figure it out when you bend it that this is a little stiffer than this. This is 28. It's, it's easier to bend than this 24. This is harder to bend. This um, <clears throat> 20 gauge is harder to bend than the 24. And then this 18 gauge is much harder to bend. And really, you need a pliers to bend it. Wires can go up to all different uh, gauges, including 15. Um, and once you get beyond that, you're looking at needing um, fire and a torch in order to be able to manipulate those wires. But um, if you just go into a craft store and pick up a spool of wire, most likely it'll be 24 gauge, which is this one. 24 gauge is pretty easy to manipulate. The problem comes in when you decide to make something like a bracelet like this that could possibly pull, be pulled. Now this was made with, um, with this copper wire and so the links are, are really strong, but if you took this wire and you just made a little loop and you had another piece with another loop and you pulled on them like if you got your bracelet snagged on something this loop would unravel and so what we're going to talk about today is how to um, use these wires and make loops that are a little more stable so I'm going to move these out of the way and I'm going to show you with this 24 gauge wire uh, because it's it's really easy to use the other reason that you would want to use, say, a 24 gauge instead of a 20 is because of your beads. If the holes on your beads are really tiny, you can't string the beads on a thicker wire. And so that would be a reason why you would use a thinner wire. So we're going to start with our round nose pliers. Those are the ones with the conical ends. And we're going to um, start about, I suppose that's about a half inch in. and we're going to bend the wire at a right angle. Um, and this right here is going to be our little, our little base. Now what we're going to do is 
is uh, grab the wire again with our pliers and we're going to move the wire around the cone, which is what we did last time. Last time we cut it off here and we made a loop because we were using a much tougher wire. Well, this we need a little more stability so it doesn't come open. So now we're going to move our pliers again over here and make a little loop like this, a little curly cue. Now I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm going to clamp down on my loop and use either your fingers or a pliers to wrap that tail around the wire. Okay? And when you're using something like 24 gauge, it's really easy to use your fingers to do it. When you get to that little end, you might want to use a pliers. And you'll notice I switched hands. I'm a right-handed person, and so I switched hands so that my dominant hand is doing the work and my uh, non-dominant hand, my left hand, is just holding this in place. And so then you can take this pliers and move it around and finish your loop. If you're finding that you have too much wire, you can also just take your cutters and cut it off. And remember to watch where you're cutting so it doesn't fly across the room. So there we go, we have our loop and our loop's a little off center so we can just take our round nose pliers and stick it inside this loop right here and straighten it out a little bit. And there we go, we have a loop. Now we're going to take some beads and stick them on there. And we're going to make a loop at the other end. Okay, we're going to take our pliers and we're going to put it mm, about an eighth of an inch up from the beads. And you'll see because I'm angling this towards the camera, my beads are sliding down. When you do it, you're going to be doing it this direction so they won't slide in the way. But you're going to be about an eighth of an inch away from the beads. You are going to, um, again, turn the wire so it's at a right angle. You're going to move your pliers around and grip from the other side. Make a circle around your pliers and bring your loop across so you have that little, that little loop or cursive E. And we're going to use our flat nose or chain nose pliers again to hold this in place and circle our wire around. Okay, And we're going to use this pliers to finish that off. Actually, I'm going to cut him. Okay, So now we have a link. Ta-da! Okay, and so when you make a link like this, you can link them all together to make a bracelet or um, a necklace. You can link these together using jump rings, and jump ring is just a circle of wire that you twist open and you loop it through both and twist it back. Um, the other way to link them together is to link them as you're beading. So if we get another piece of wire, and we take our round nose pliers, we're gripping our wire, we're going at a right angle, moving the pliers around to the other side, now we're looping the wire around the cone of the pliers, to make our little cursive E. Now at this point, before we loop it around and finish it off, we're going to slide that other loop, that little connector piece on. Now I'm going to grab my wire with my flat nose pliers, keeping this little link out of the way, and loop it around. Okay, and we're going to snip off this little extra piece of wire, and I'm going to add some more beads. Okay, bead and bead and bead. And now we're going to finish this off. Okay, and we're going to bring our pliers up here, make our right angle, switch our pliers around, loop it around, get our little cursive E. 
Now, as another option, what you could do is add this to a piece of chain. So this is a piece of chain that I snipped off of a longer chain. It was six feet of chain, and I just slipped, slipped off a couple of links. And I'm going to slide this onto my wire like that. I'm going to grab my loop with the pliers and twist it around. And when you twist it around, you want to try and get those twists right next to each other so you get a nice, even... And you can see that I can twist this as much as I want. It helps to keep them even if you do three twists on one side, do three twists on another. But you can use these twists also as an architectural element or an artistic element of your bracelet. So see, I'm making this twist really long here, and it just adds a different look to the bracelet. Now I'm going to snip off this extra part. There we go. Straighten them out. As I said, this 24 gauge wire is really, really bendable. And so I would look for something, if you were going to really make something like this, <clears throat> uh, make a bracelet or um, especially a bracelet, I would go with a heavier gauge wire because um, you know, bracelets take more wear because you're, you can possibly get them snagged on something. A necklace, unless you have little kids who are pulling on it, a necklace should be okay with a 24 gauge. But I'd go more with like a 22 or a 20 gauge wire like this. And when you're twisting this around, then you will need the pliers to twist it. Um, but you can see these earrings here. I did sort of a, a similar thing where I actually just made curly cues um, and, and um, I connected them together. So um, there you go. You can use any of the tools you would like. I'm going to try the small one. Okay. You can also try this fancy one, too. That'll make it a loop for you automatically. Yeah. Again, with the easiness of it all. Yeah, that's a, um, a neat pliers. You know, it, it's you can only buy it through Jubilee catalogs, but it makes the loop for you. Instead of having to do the right angle and then loop it around the pliers, you stick the, the wire in there and it has um, a little molded space in there and so it um, makes the loop for you and then you get perfect loops. I made that too short, didn't I? Well, this is where you could use a chain nose pliers to grab that little end to bring it around. Either this one or this one. Yep, and you hold the, the pliers you're working with in your dominant hand and the pliers that you're just steadying with your hand in your non-dominant hand. Yeah, sometimes when the ends are really <laughs> small, it's hard. I but you can do it. I you just can do it, it the other, the opposite direction. And once you start to learn how to manipulate that small, that's when you can start to fix things. When your kids are like, "I broke this," but you can't take the whole thing apart mm -hmm. for some reason. So wow, well, this is interesting. Yeah, I found it really um, interesting to hear the part about the right angle because I never knew that, and that just seemed like it would make it so much easier than what I had been trying to do. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Tricks of the trade. Yeah. There you go. You can yeah. string some beads on and connect it all together. You can connect it to this if you want. And mm -hmm. Make something fancy. <laughs> we're going to have a really interesting looking bracelet by the time we're done. Ah, I think those are the fun ones that you just put on a bunch of beads and twist and, and it makes it look very eclectic. And three different colors of wire. Yeah. Okay, so. It's all good. Right. Silver and gold go with everything. Angle. And then... Up here, and loop. Did I do that right? Mm-hmm. So now you said you can make bracelets, earrings, necklaces. You can so. do just about anything with this because you're just yeah. linking things together. So you're making smaller links, and like I talked about last time, with um, when you link things together, you get more movement. Just like with these earrings, there's two links. At the bottom, I just have a little colored bead, and in the middle, I have a ladybug bead, and they move when you move. And so I think that, that adds some fun to it. Um, and the same thing with a necklace or a bracelet. Every link adds movement to it. Now what if you do like me and you made your loop way too far away? Can you undo it? You can try end? and undo it. I would undo it and then just cut that wire off or move down farther and then cut the wire off when you're done. Okay. You only want to start like maybe 
um, an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from your beads when you're about to do the loop. That's what I did wrong. And you can only undo the wire and retwist it so many times before you're going to snap it off. Okay. I mean, it's wire and it's metal, but you keep moving it back and forth, you're going to break it. Okay. So. Oh, I can tell why this is not my <laughs> forte. Oh it, gosh. It takes a little practice to be, be able to manipulate it, but once you get the concept down and you practice a little bit, you can make all kinds of things. Yeah, we're going to have to put up some of the uh, beginner photos of this as well, <laughs> just to be fair. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for, uh, for joining us yes. again today, and um, we'll see you next time with some more DIY wow. fun. and. We'll yep. catch up online. Hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.